I'm Nicole and welcome to episode 69 of the Nicole Stitches podcast. I am a left-handed crocheter, knitter, and general crafter coming to you from Northern Virginia where I work and live with my husband, our cat Webster, and our kitten Birdie. You can keep up with me on Instagram at Nicole SP Designs, on Ravelry as she writes things, on Pinterest at NSP Designs, and in my shop, nspdesigns.com, where I make and sell handmade project bags, notions, pouches, and other fiber accessories, as well as original crochet patterns. There's a Ravelry group for the podcast, and you can go there to find a Get to Know Us thread where you can introduce yourself and get to know other members of the group, a Q&A thread where you can leave me questions that I'll answer in a future video. It's where you'll find the monthly pattern giveaway thread, which for December is not up yet. I am just now recalling, so I will go and do that after I'm done with this video. And it's where you'll find the uh, Chatter and Finish Objects threads for the NSP Comfy Crochet Cal, which is a casual crochet along that I'm running this year. Um, if you're new, welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for giving me a chance. I hope you enjoyed here. And if you're a return viewer, thank you for coming back. My background once again has changed. I decided to finally make some decisions, get my stuff off the floor and put it on the wall. Uh, I had been kind of waffling about where I wanted some things to go and I had this, uh, this is new to my wall. It is, let me see if I can give you a better image of some of what's on there. There you go. That's my enamel pin collection. Those pins that are not on um, jackets or bags of mine anyway, but uh, I had wanted for a long time to have a better way of displaying my pin collection. I had some of them on hoops for a little while, but I had far outgrown uh, the embroidery hoops. I made myself like a hoop with fabric and I could stick them in. I had far outgrown that and um, the overflow pins were just kind of like sitting in a mug on a bookshelf and it was gross. Um, I had this empty bulletin board, so I just stuck all my pins in there and I hung it on the wall and then I made some more decisions about what's behind me. So um, I now have a background again. We're back to the days of I'm sitting in a chair. There's stuff against the wall behind me. This was in my background a long time ago when I uh, before I started sitting on the floor <laughs> in the old apartment and it's back. Um, this used to be above my sewing table in the old place and I, I just really like it so I wanted it in my background. Anyway, here we are. I think this is the one. Um, if you're new and don't know why I'm rambling about what's behind me, uh, we moved recently, almost a month ago now, but <laughs> anyone who's moved know that knows that it's a much longer process than uh, just the moving day. <sighs> so, uh, I've been moving around uh, in this room trying to find the right place to podcast and I think this is it. Uh, so anyway, welcome to the episode. Uh, uh, if you've been watching Vlogmas, thank you so much for that. It is December, so Vlogmas is on. I am vlogging every day or mostly every day until Christmas. Um, I have not yet missed a day this year. Um, I am, of course, giving myself the leeway to skip a day if it's a busy day or if it's a day where nothing at all happens and there's just nothing interesting, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm giving myself the option of skipping here and there, uh, but so far I've kept up. We've had some things going on and it's been, uh, hopefully it's been fun and interesting for people watching. A little bit of a festive addition to your day. Um, and this is just a regular episode. In Vlogmas, it's much more casual. I purposely don't talk a ton in Vlogmas about what I'm working on because I don't want it to be a, just a repeat of what's in the podcast and vice versa. Um, but I do, I show like footage of me knitting or crocheting or stitching or you know, whatever. Um, but I don't talk in depth about my projects anywhere but in normal episodes of the podcast. Um, that is all my interest stuff out of the way, I think. And I'm going to get started. I have a, a boon of uh, stuff to share with you this week. So it's pretty exciting. And I'm just going to get rolling. First, I will show you what has been um, really a focus of my knitting energy for a few weeks now because it's a sweater and I love sweater knitting. Um, oh gosh, my yarn is all tangled. One of the cats got into this project bag. It was hanging out on the floor um, and one of the cats, while I went out to run an errand, decided that they should go digging in my bag. And so it's a little bit tangled, but this is the Baldelia sweater. That's a pattern by Marie Amelie Designs. Um, it's supposed to be a DK weight sweater, but I am knitting it in two strands of fingering weight yarn held double. I'm using Knit Picks Stroll Fingering in a few different colors in wide stripes. So uh, I will show you. Here is where I was last week and here's where I am now. Um, the colors I'm using though are Dogwood Heather, Pumpkin, Dandelion, Mint, and Holly Berry. And I'm holding them all together with a strand of white. Um, so 
this is where I was last week. This is my little lemon bar stitch marker by Little Bitty Delights. And um, I've cast off the body. I've gotten through Body Island and I'm on to my first sleeve. Uh, so here you can see the sleeve detail. That is what I love about this sweater. It is just an oversized bat wing style sweater, which also means that uh, I didn't have to like cast off and cast on stitches for the underarm because it's just a bat wing. So um, that was real nice. And I'm just working my way through the first sleeve. So we're getting there. I am preparing to move on to the mint section and see where we are, though I'm going to do some more fit checks um, as I go, just because I don't know if my arms need to be this long. <laughs> but also, um, I have a shortage of mint. So I decided, I got one skein of each color originally. I thought that would be enough. However, I am a little bit uncertain that I have enough mint to do as much as I need um, on both sleeves to make the block of the stripe equal to the other colors. I was able, I went back and decided to get myself extra skeins of the colors that would be on the sleeves. Um, so I got myself an extra skein of dandelion, an extra skein of white, and an extra skein of hollyberry, but Knit Picks was sold out of mint. So this is how much I have left from the one skein that I used here on the body. I genuinely don't know if this is enough for, <laughs> for the, um, for both sleeves and to make the stripe wide enough. I don't want to have an asymmetrical stripe because then it will be the only part of the sweater that is not the same. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. There might be, you know, like a deceptively generous amount of yarn here. There might be plenty. Obviously the sleeves have a much smaller circumference than the body. I just don't know. I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I have thought about just continuing both sleeves in dandelion. Um, because I do have plenty of that. I am working from the remainder ball from my stripe of dandelion here. Uh, and I also have um, an extra skein of it. So I thought about doing that. Um, I thought about doing just finishing the sleeves in, in white. Um, maybe, I don't know. I feel like I might end up um, doing one sleeve in the mint and seeing how much is left and then frogging if it's not enough. I, we're gonna see. We'll see. Obviously this is not, this doesn't have to be perfect, um, but I do want my sleeves to be the same. And I know that me personally, it will bug me if my one stripe on the two sleeves is not this, is not equal. So it's a little bit of a conundrum. I could always check Knit Picks now and see if they have a skein of mint available. Mm, we'll see. This is gonna be a quick one because I have barely any progress of note. Um, but these are my Brave at Heart mitts by Diana Walla. These are a gift knit for my sister-in-law for Christmas. She's a Gryffindor. These are Gryffindor mitts. Um, and I finished the first one and, uh, I, I have cast on the second, but that's pretty much all that I have done. Here's my remarkable progress. I am knitting them in Knit Picks palette in Garnet Heather and um, Knit Picks Hawthorne Kettle Dyed and Compass. I'm actually using this little pal to knit the mitts. This is just an extra uh, cake that I have just in case. This is all stash yarn. I was able to pull together for this project, but yeah, this is um, all the progress I have. It's like two rows, it's the cast on and then like two rows of ribbing. So uh, I started this this week because I don't want to be late. I want them done for Christmas. Um, However, I did notice the reason that I have so little progress. Um, usually if I'm gonna do ribbing, I try to power through all of it in the same sitting. Um, but the reason I only have that amount of progress is that it was making my hands hurt. Um, so this is a tight gauge, it's fingering weight yarn, it's size one needles, um, and it's just a tight, it's a tight gauge. And it was kind of making my hands and wrists hurt. Um, I did a lot of knitting on my Baldelia sweater from the last time that I recorded and I did a lot of knitting on Black Friday. I'll get to that in a second. And it just, you know, it just made my hands hurt. So that was Tuesday, I believe. Today is Thursday. That was Tuesday. Yesterday I took a complete break from knitting. I didn't knit at all. Um, today I haven't knit at all either, but I, I wanna get these done. So I'm hoping that just taking a little bit of a breather from knitting will help me with this. Um, and then I just need to finish that mitt and I can take 
as long a break from working on such small needles as I would like. My third work in progress for you is one that you haven't seen in a little while. This is the Ephemeris Shawl by Deborah Gerhard. Um, this is a two color fingering weight shawl and I am knitting this in, hold on one second, um, Hazel Knits Artisan Sock, I believe it is, in the colors Hoppy Blonde and Verdigree. Um, so there you can see the colors together. And I will show you the shawl. Oh, I'm just going to throw the yarn on the ground. Um, here. Oh, I'm in the middle of a row. Um, I was on a train when I worked on this, so I kind of had to shove it in a bag no matter where I was and get off the train. Um, so that's why I'm in the middle of a row this time. But here you go. Here's the shawl. It's been a little while since I showed this on the podcast. So I will give you a good look here from the tip to current state. Here's where I was last time I knit on this and here is the progress that I made. Um, there's not really any particular reason that I didn't work on this for a bit. Um, I kind of uh, had, I think I had too many projects going on at the same time and I was overwhelmed. And so, and then I started a sweater and for me, my sweater projects, whatever they are, are always going to be the thing that I turn to the most. It's just the type of knitting that I most enjoy doing. Um, so I was really distracted by my sweater, and then I wanted to finish the, the Gryffindor mitts for my sister-in-law, so this kind of fell to the back of the line. But what happened was I ended up t taking an adventure on Black Friday. Um, if you watched day one of Vlogmas, you know this already, but on Black Friday, which was this past Friday, I took an adventure up to Philadelphia to uh, help my best friend, Rachel, shop for her wedding dress and our bridesmaid dresses. Um, so on Thursday, it was Thanksgiving in the US, and that night I stayed over in Baltimore, very early in the morning, I got up and got on a train to Philly, and then another train, and then um, we did the shopping and all that, and then I took another train all the way back to DC, and then I took the metro, and then I took a car to get back home. So it was a long day of travel, and I didn't want to... Um, I needed something that would travel easily. So my choices at the time were my Baldelia, which as I said, it tends to take up most of my focus because it's my sweater project, but it, it travels in a big bag. This is um, the large bag that I make for my shop. Um, this is big and like it crumples down and squishes, you know, it can squish up easily, but it's just a bigger bag to keep with me. Um, and because I had stayed overnight the night before and I was taking trains and stuff to get back home, I had to pack light in general. I needed to pack a change of clothes and pajamas and toothbrush and stuff. So I didn't want to junk up my bag with a lot of other things. So this was just gonna take up a lot of space. Um, it arguably would have been the easiest project to bring because really it was just stockinette, but this was a, like a bulk issue. Um, then there were my Brave at Heart mitts. While a small travel project, um, I need to be looking at that chart the whole time in order to be knitting. It wasn't ideal for that. And so my ephemeris won the day. Um, this one was perfect because it travels in a smaller bag, one that's this size, super easy to crunch down again, but it was just two skeins of yarn to deal with um, and uh, just easier in general. I do need to refer to the pattern um, every row to see what I'm doing, but after that, it's a consistent repeat all the way across um, and then on the way back, and it was just gonna be my easiest option. So this got some attention, um, which makes me really happy. I do love this pattern. It's beautiful and I love how it's knitting up with these two colors together. It's just gorgeous. Um, so this did get some attention and it's back in my rotation. Um, it might fall by the wayside a little bit again because I want to finish my Baldelia and start my Christmas sweater and because I want to finish those mitts because they're a gift. Um, so I think what I'm going to try and do is power through the mitts, finish them, and then this will be my main project besides whatever sweater I'm working on, be it my Baldelia or my Christmas sweater, it will be sweater this. Um, and it's coming out beautifully. So that is all of my knitting. And as I mentioned, I had to take a break from knitting um, yesterday and today I have also not knit at all um, to preserve my hands and wrists. I find that um, I do get like repetitive stress pain in general, but I find that it is much faster um, to come on in the cold months and it has been getting increasingly chilly 
lately um, this week, so I think that's why it hurt my hands so much more quickly. But I'm not someone who can sit quietly and not have something in my hands. Generally, it's just to relax. It's what I like to do. So I turned to some embroidery. Um, I have had my eye on these patterns for a while. They are from a designer called Lolly and Grace, who I discovered this year. She designs embroidery patterns. Um, I do have a cross stitch on the go right now. It is Pretty Little DC by Satsuma Street, but I don't know where it is. It is packed somewhere. I think that right next to me here is my craft closet, um, which is the closet of our spare room that Adam told me that I could fill entirely with my stuff. So I did. I don't know if he anticipated that I would fill it quite as full with my stuff as I did, but he said that I could, so I did. Um, it's somewhere in there packed up, I couldn't find it. So uh, I decided to cast these on because tis the season and they're very cute. So this is the first one. Lolly and Grace released these three sets. Um, she calls them ornament patterns. I don't think I'm gonna make them ornaments. I'll get to, I'll get there. Um, but it's three sets and each set is two ornaments. You can get uh, the whole kit with all the supplies or you can get just the PDF pattern and I just got the pattern. And this is uh, one that I finished yesterday. This was very, very quick. They're only four inch um, patterns. So they're very fast stitches. And what I did was um, she has her pattern stitched on solid fabric and she uses different colors. And the knots here that I did are supposed to be beads, I think, or sequin. Um, I didn't follow any of her guidance in terms of fabric or thread color or anything. Um, I dove into my fabric stash and grabbed some old fabric that's hanging around um, from a couple holiday seasons ago. And I also used random uh, embroidery floss. I have this Ziploc bag of unlabeled spools of embroidery floss. I don't know why I didn't label them. That very much bothers me. I'm having a fight mentally with past Nicole about it, but it's too late now. So I'm trying to use that floss up. Uh, so I just pulled out some red and some metallic floss. Metallic floss is actually made by the devil, um, but it worked really nicely for this and it's really cute. This um, stuff is sulky. I've talked about it before. It is like a dissolvable, um, it's a paper, but it's a fabric and you can run it through your printer. You print your pattern on it. You stick it to your fabric, you stitch over it. And when you're done, you soak it off in water and it totally disappears. So, um, this one is done. It says, let it snow. And it's got little metallic floss, um, colonial knot snowflakes. And then the other one that came in this pair is this snowflakes. This is the one that I've been stitching on after I finished that. This one's a little more complex. And once again, I'm not using the colors or anything that she tells you to use for this. I'm just using what I have on hand. Um, I'm using white floss here and metallic floss here and just kind of deciding as I go what I want to highlight as metallic and what I want to be white. And um, I'm not going to finish these as ornaments. I don't think I want to use them as some type of wall art. Um, I could put them in a smaller hoop. This obviously is not a four inch hoop. I think this is probably an eight inch hoop. Um, I could get them in smaller hoops and have them as hoop art. Uh, I thought about that, or I might get a uh, craft store is near me. Michaels and Joanne both, I think, tend to sell these little packs of very small canvases that are just perfectly square, little prepared canvases that you could make for tiny paintings. But I sometimes like to finish um, my embroidery and cross stitch projects that way. I think that's maybe what I'm gonna do. Um, we'll see. Uh, what I decide, you know, I don't have to decide quite yet. I will wait until I finish this. And uh, I think I'll take a wander maybe this weekend at Michael's or Joanne and see what, what strikes me. Do I want to do a hoop? Do I want to do a canvas? And then there are four other patterns um, in this same vein. They don't all match. They match each other within the set of two. They don't all match those six. She just happened to release six, but they're very cute. And um, these are great little projects for me to work on when my hands are sore. Um, they're festive, which keeps me in the holiday spirit, which is nice because I tend to hate this time of year, if I'm honest. I don't hate Christmas. I love Christmas as a concept, spending time with family and friends and giving things to loved ones to, that will make them happy and eating a lot of food. Um, but the time of year itself is hard for me. Winter is my least favorite season. I hate being cold. I hate um, snow and ice. It's dangerous. 
And the holiday season sometimes tends to make people act like jerks, especially on the road, which is an issue for me. And I also struggle with seasonal depression. I've mentioned this. I think I talked about it more last winter and last Vlogmas. Um, I struggle with seasonal depression. So the very short days are tough for me, coupled with cold weather, which I hate, is hard for me. So things that help me stay feeling festive about this time of year, uh, rather than reflecting on how terrible winter is, always good. Um, so these are a nice little thing that I've been doing. That's the point. These are nice. Um, keeps me feeling festive. Um, I might um, give a couple as gifts. For I have loved ones who are very worthy of handmade gifts. Sometimes you you don't get lucky with that and they don't really appreciate it. But my loved ones, um, my actual family, it has a long tradition of being uh, crafters, makers. Um, everyone on uh, in my my side of the family made in some way. We had crocheters and embroiderers, sewists and carpenters and all kinds of things. Um, so they, they understand what goes into handmade art, which is lovely. Um, and I always like to give handmade gifts. I usually run short on time, but I might finish some as Christmas gifts this year. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to throw a new my cue segment together for you real quick. I have um, technically four things, but one of them is more. I'll explain that in a second. For you this week, the first is the Kaleidoscope Blanket. This is a crochet blanket patterned by Morbid Sparks, Catherine Bly. Um, I love blankets like these, um, where it's just like these fantastically ornate looking crochet blankets. They're actually, they're not beginner friendly, I would say. I mean, I haven't made this one yet, so I don't know, but I have made a very similar one couple of years ago and it's definitely not something that I would have felt comfortable doing as a beginner beginner but if you've done a few things and you're willing to learn on the fly uh, these are great because you learn so many new stitches and new techniques and stuff as you go um, and crochet the lovely thing about it is that it is so easy to fix you are only ever having to control one stitch at a time so you can rip back exactly to the stitch that you need to and no further you don't have to worry about dropping stitches um, you can also I feel hide a multitude of sins much more easily with crochet than you can with knitting. So it's another perk, but this is just a beautiful blanket. Um, I love the color choices of the model options. Um, and it's just gorgeous. I've been in the mood recently to work on a crochet blanket. I haven't started one or anything. I have a lot of stuff on the slate right now, but I've definitely been in the spirit. And so that kind of, I think, inspired adding this one to the queue besides the fact that it's just beautiful. The next one is the Domki, I think, hat by Hannah Masi Masajuska, Masajuska, I'm so, Masajuska, Masajuska, I'm really sorry. Um, Hada Knits. Uh, <laughs> this is a colorwork hat and it's just super duper cute. Um, it reminds me very much of one of the fabrics actually that I picked for my shop this year for the holidays with a little village on it. It's very sweet and I just, I just love it. I love color work. We know, we know this and uh, hats are great quick projects. Next up is the Kruska Cowl by Elena Fedotova and this is a crochet cowl. It is done in worsted weight yarn and it is a very interesting stitch. Um, it looks kind of like stockinette, but not really. It's just a crocheted herringbone stitch, and this just looks really big and squishy and nice. Um, this is, uh, it comes with different length variations that you can do, and it's just gorgeous. I love the color that this person chose to make it. That's what's caught, what caught my eye. Uh, and then I realized that it's crochet, and I thought that was so interesting and creative. Um, because it, it doesn't look like knitting or crochet. It just looks like something totally different, but you do it with crochet. It's, that's really cool. And finally, the last thing that I have in my queue this week is a collection of patterns, actually. This is the Little Sailor Collection, and it is a group of five patterns. It is published by Nadia Cretin Le Chien. I hope I said your name correctly. I did try. I speak a little bit of French, but not always that well. Um, so I've talked about this a few times now. I have a niece or nephew on the way um, in the new year. Uh, I, we're very excited about it. It will be my first niece or nephew, Adams as well. It is his sister, my sister-in-law, um, who is expecting. We're quite excited. And so I am just looking for every excuse now to make every cute baby thing that I possibly can out of yarn. Um, I've always loved these things, but I've never had anyone really to give them to. I have some friends who have babies, but they live far away and it's hard to like gauge fit or interest and you know, I don't necessarily, it's nice to just like shove a baby thing in an envelope and send it on their way, but 
you know, what have you. And now I have, there's like a baby boom in my friend group, uh, my like group of loved ones. I know at least three babies who are cooking now, I think. And they are all very knit worthy and I'm very excited. So this one in particular is quite exciting to me because it's actually in my family. Um, and so this is a collection of, um, there's a little pair of like pants, there's a jumpsuit, there's a couple sweaters and there's a hat and booties. They're just so cute. So all of them are in my queue at some point. I would like to make at least one of them soon. I have a lot of baby projects for these, these babes that I want to get on the needle sooner rather than later because these kids they're coming. Let me tell you, these kids are coming. Um, so yeah, that's in my queue. I grabbed the whole collection. Um, I don't recall if you can order them separately and just get like one or two things that you like, but I loved everything in there. So I grabbed the whole thing and they're just so sweet. Uh, and that is the entire new in my queue segment for this week. So with that, I'm just going to wrap things up. I've babbled a lot throughout this episode, so I'm just going to move right to the end stuff. Thank you so much for watching. If you celebrated Thanksgiving this past week or observed it, I hope that you had a wonderful day, um, got to spend it with whichever loved ones you saw fit, or if you spent it alone, I hope you had a good time too. Um, and if you don't celebrate, I hope you just had a nice day, uh, you know, and a, a nice weekend. If you're watching Vlogmas, I hope you're enjoying it. And if you're not watching Vlogmas, what the heck? Um, <laughs> I try to keep the videos pretty short and just a good overview of my day, that kind of thing. There's a lot of cat footage in them. So if you're looking for more video of Webster and Birdie, that is where you will find it. These two goobers are <laughs> every day. They're finding new and interesting ways to um, keep me on my toes, let's say. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a good week. Thanks so much for watching. Get lots of crafting done and I'll see you next time. Bye.